Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekly brief discussion. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Matt Dunlap, and I'm the AVP of Well Advised K, a team whose mission is to help employees worksite financial education. Each Thursday, we host a short educational session to help. I'd like to take the next 15 minutes to discuss the basics on taking action steps for better expense planning. If you have any questions or would like access to this in a worksheet format to prioritize your own expenses, please contact us. Our contact information will be on the final page. Today's quote comes from Theodore Roosevelt, and it's a simple one, but means a lot in terms of budgeting and working towards a better financial tomorrow. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. The goal of this quote is saying, if you haven't started creating a budget, uh, as we've talked about in previous sessions, now is the perfect time to start. And if you believe you can do it, you're more than halfway there uh, to, to accomplishing that, which gets you to a better financial tomorrow. I promise you, if you start a budget, you will be in a better spot financially than you were the day before. So how are you guys currently budgeting? Uh, we wanna know. There's many different ways you can do it. Old school pen and paper, spreadsheets, applications, uh, different apps. There's, there's many different ways you can. You just wanna pick the version that's right for you and stick to it. Uh, that's the main thing is, is starting it and sticking to it. Find the best, whether it's for you and your spouse or just you, figure out the best way that works and, and stick to it. Okay, so this slide is from a previous session where we talked about the four simple steps to create a budget or to review a budget. So we wanted to just do a quick recap on these. First, determine your current monthly income. And a side note on this, millions are currently filing for unemployment. Maybe a you, you or a loved one is yourself. Uh, there are reports that individuals aren't receiving their checks on time. So be sure when you're budgeting that we are not assuming that the check's gonna come in the mail prior uh, and we wanna plan accordingly for the income that we know is coming in. So if we start receiving our checks, obviously want to include that, but if we have not received them, don't assume that they're gonna be coming on time. Uh, there is a lot of logistical uh, things that are going on currently that are unprecedented and we wanna make sure that we're planning properly for what we have, not what we could be having. Step two, identifying our high priority bills. And step three, estimating other expenses. These are the two areas that we're really gonna focus on today when it comes to creating an action plan around expenses. And then finally, learning new ways to save. Uh, so the two main strategies obviously are new ways to save and expense cutting, or new ways to earn and expense cutting. So uh, both of those strategies are valuable and we wanna approach them uh, both at the same time to, to get the best impact and, and best solution for your budget. Another previous screen, just talking about identifying high priority bills. Everybody has a different idea of what high priority means. Uh, you know, mortgage, rent, utilities, auto, insurance payments, these are high priority bills. Netflix, unfortunately, during social, you know, social distancing time could be considered a high priority, uh, but it is not. We always wanna compare income and expenses on an equal basis. So if your insurance is bi-weekly and your water is quarterly, um, we wanna compare those on a standard basis and, and, and do that consistently. So allocating your income. There are five to six main categories that we look at when allocating income. Take a minute and think about how you prioritize and allocate based on these five categories. You can pause the video now. Um, and hit play when you're when you're done with that thought. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so these are our general principles of how we would like to see allocation and in the order we would like to see it allocated. Uh, so first, we wanna allocate on savings. The reason we look at allocating savings first is because normally people put this as one of their last action items in for allocation. And if we do that, there might not be enough there to save. So before we spend on other activities or other entertainment ideas, we wanna put savings first. So, and these are estimates on percentages, so we don't want to get too caught up in the number. We wanna work what's best for you and your current situation, but these are general averages to go by. The second and third items are debt and then housing and benefits. So this 
a large chunk of your income between these three categories. But we want to always approach these ones first as these are what is going to what we consider high priority, whether it's debt paying interest on that savings to protect from future pitfalls that could occur and then from housing and benefits, things to not only uh, that you need to pay on a, on a general basis, not only uh, for credit purposes, but also just for best practices. And then finally, uh, the final two portions are uh, living expenses and transportation. These can be drastically changed and affected, uh, affected now because of social distancing and COVID-19. But at the end of the day, uh, whether we're comparing our 19 budget to our 20 budget, uh, or our 20 budget to our 20, 2021 budget. Uh, we always want to prepare for those. And when these uncertain and unexpected times occur, we can adjust and be mobile. Uh, but we always want to allocate for these accordingly. So the last part I want to discuss is in regards to direct deposits. Direct deposits are a great tool and great best practice to make sure we're spending on necessary items first. Uh, this is this has been pretty standard when it comes to benefits such as health care or retirement plans. Uh, but with new programs getting infused into the workplace, such as a well-advised K employee care program, we can now actually use direct deposits for savings and debt repayments as well. So these are really attacking the three things that we discussed, the debt, the savings, and the housing benefits. These are things that all can be approached now with direct deposit, so you're not tempted to use that cash for other things, and it is taken out of your paycheck before you even have access to it um, with still the, the added benefit of allocating to those proper channels. When we're creating our budget, one of the toughest things that I hear when, when coaching with individuals is creating a food plan, especially if you had, haven't budgeted before and focused on how much you're really spending, whether it be per person um, or per week, per month, if you're an individual living by yourself. Um, these are some great, this is a great tool uh, from 2019 that helps get an average of how much we should be spending uh, based on what type of cost plan you're looking at. Um, obviously, some of these numbers might be inflated now based compared to the 2019 when this was released, but still a good resource nonetheless for individuals and for families to understand how, how much we should be spending on income. Okay, so we're going to take a second now to do something we do in our workshops uh, when we are on site with, on site with groups and just take a second not only to understand uh, prioritizing bills, but then also how we cost cut on some of these items. So we have George and Laura here. They've been happily married for 25 years and they have $2,950 of income. Our goal for this is to look at their monthly bills that are below. We can see at the bottom that they're spending more than they're bringing in. And so our goal is to figure out how we're going to budget this properly and what cuts are going to be made in order uh, so George and Laura can have an effective and accurate budget and also uh, make the payments on all of their needed items. So pause the video now. Here's a brief chart that can be used in order to help think about allocating these. So prioritize these in your best thought process uh, for all 12 categories. And then also, if there's any cuts that need to be made to certain items, think about what expenses we're going to cut and by how much by entering the new expense dollar amount added up at the bottom and see if we have made an effective budget, uh, which gets us below the $29.50 that they're currently bringing in. So take a second, pause the video. When you've completed, um, please rejoin us. Okay, so welcome back. Um, hopefully that was a good exercise to get your thought process in prioritizing, prioritizing bills. Obviously for everybody, the priorities are gonna be a little bit different, but we obviously have some basics that we wanna look at. Um, obviously the entertainment and breakfast at Big Boys are two things that we're looking at that are not uh, needed expenses. And those things would be the first things that are cut uh, to get 
to cut down on our total expenses. The other things are paying for high interest rate items and, and it bills before paying for lower interest. So we want to look at making all of the payments on that Chase visa before looking at a Citibank or some lower interest debts. And it, as we've discussed in previous sessions, certain utility items such as electric bills, cell phones, internet cable, especially during these times of COVID, uh, there are some great resources and tools to help cut these expenses uh, with not giving up too much of the actual utilization of these resources. Here are some other great ideas for cutting in, in these different categories. Wherever your priorities sit, uh, that's great. But here are some ideas in all of the categories to cut. Um, anywhere from packing lunches when we do go back to work to heating and cooling opportunities, as well as there's going to be a extra urge or want when we start getting back to a normalcy of life uh, to go out and, and do extra things in social gatherings with entertainment and things like that. And that's obviously something we want to promote in a healthy manner and a safe manner. But also we want to look at some free entertainment activities uh, that can allow us to have that social interaction that we've been missing for the last weeks without breaking the bank to do so. Our goal for today, my goal for today is uh, I want to challenge each and every one of you to pick five cost cutting tips or exercises from above or different ones that you've done in the past or heard about from other resources and try them over the next 30 days. Uh, you know, they could be small little things and or just as fully loading the dishwashers or the washing and drying machine to, to be more resourceful with with water and utility. Um, or it could be a big thing as cutting cable or something like that. But try five different things that you can do and see how it how it works. Um, I, I strongly urge you, if you do have a family or loved ones that you live with, to do it with them. It's a great exercise to do in a team mentality with the family. Uh, you'll have a much better chance of getting the right results if everybody's bought in. Finally, please join us on Mondays at noon for our weekly mindfulness practice session led by Spark 360's Director of Behavioral Health and Mindfulness, Julie Fishcorn. There is a link on our site to join. I briefly want to go to our contact information. Please visit us at welladvisedk.com, call us or email us. And today we're actually going to take you to our survival toolkit for COVID-19 on our Well Advised website and just want to briefly take you through um, our website and show you the great resources that are available. So here's our weekly sessions where for next week and all the following weeks you can join directly. We have all of our previous video sessions as you can see, as well as some financial resources, different things. We're updating these all the time. So great ideas and great ways, quick reads to be able to, to help. Here are some other sessions. Our, our great wellness Partners uh, have built an at-home challenge where you collect points to, on a daily basis while you're working at home to you know, celebrate different things that you're doing to help your mindfulness and wellness uh, during social distancing. Please share us with us your point totals at Well Advised LTD on Instagram, and we'll, we'd be happy to share your results and, and the different things you're doing to to social distance while working from home with some great resources. Here's where we can join the Spark Unplug, which is the weekly mindfulness session led by Julie Fishcorn. It's a great resource to help you from a mental perspective of preparing yourself for the week ahead and, and getting in the right mindset. Here are some other helpful health tips, whether it's from mindfulness, breathing, sleeping, eating, or exercising, a lot of great resources here. And we also have a great resource coming up, which is a webinar next Tuesday around uh, helping individuals return to work post COVID. Uh, this is led by one of our partners at Think HR, a great resource to help employees be at their best as they're returning to work. Really excited to see that program next week. And then here are some other great resources um, around preventing the spread of COVID-19. So with that, I want to say thank you to everybody for your attendance today. Truly appreciate it. 
And we look forward to seeing you next week. In the meantime, be safe and have a great day.